in touch with the ground. I'm on the hunt down after you. I smell like I sound. I'm lost in a crowd. And I'm hungry like the wolf. I straddle the line of discord and rhyme. I'm on the hunt down after you. Mars is alive. Juice is like wine. And I'm hungry like the wolf. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Channel Chasers. Now, I have a question for you all. What is your opinion on bunny girls? Now, (laughs) we grew up in a generation with Lola Bunny. Let me just remind y'all that real quick. Because so many people have judged this show off of one scene, and yet y'all forget you grew up in the 90s. Y'all watched Space Jam probably several times if you're anything like me. So this is not the first time y'all have had some confusing feelings about an animated bunny. I'm not trying to call any of you furries, but let's be real here. Like, Lola Bunny definitely had us questioning some things. I mean, um, well, first of all, hi, everyone. Uh, that's kind of an intense way to start. Oh, no, but, that, I, I, that's how I wanted to start, but yeah. But so. also, yeah, Lola's costume, her uniform was yep. not that much more clothing. Yep, and also... Also, real quick, uh, before I actually get into the in- like the actual like introduction of us proper, if y'all just go back and you watch the scene of the Toon Squad intro, and you like, you know, when they call her up and she has like that silhouette and she's like swishing her hips as she's walking out, like, come on, yo, come on, yo, for real. Y'all are, gonna, y'all are gonna be mad at this, and y- y'all are gonna be mad at B stars, and you- you're not gonna question this at all. All right. Well, all right. Hi- at least we aren't gonna touch upon like the Sonic fandom. Oh no, that's a whole another can of worms. Uh, that's an that's a separate podcast onto itself. Uh, but what is the topic of today's show? I've kind of just been like on like a tangent about Lola Bunny for like the first two minutes. Well, this episode, Rain Duran. Which, you know, it all makes sense uh, when you mm-hmm. realize what this episode is about. This is actually uh, covering an anime uh, that recently was released from Netflix jail and finally available in the US after months of waiting. It is, of course, B stars based off of the hit manga by Pedro Itagaki. Um, the first season is out, and I was like, okay. At first, you know, I made a couple switches. Um, couple, I, I, yeah, because I, you know, like at first we were gonna do on my block, but that was the original one. And then I was like, no, I finished Castlevania. Castlevania has so much to talk about. We got to jump on this because this is a huge turning point. And then Beastars came out like literally last week. And I was like, oh, my God, Beastars is finally out. And I watch it. I'm like, oh, there's so much to talk about here. We got to do this one. We and gotta, here gotta I am just one. being like, um, okay. But, yeah, I, you know, three minutes in, I didn't actually do the proper intros. What's up, guys? Of course. I am your host, as always. Welcome to Channel Chasers. I am Jay from Mr. Jay's Reviews. And joining me, as always, is my friend, my co-host, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, people. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we are talking about Beastars. Uh, you know, I, I've heard about, I heard about this show a long time ago, or I heard about the series a long time ago when the manga uh, started, like, I was going to say a couple years ago. And, uh, like, I hadn't read it yet because I heard it was getting a Netflix adaptation. And then I realized, oh, shit, Netflix always just releases shit in Japan and makes America wait, like, a year to uh, six months to a year to actually get it here. (sighs) Ha ha, this is going to suck. But it's finally here, and we finally get to talk about it. Uh, So um, before we get into, like, initial thoughts, uh, basically, without spoiling anything, uh, the premise of B-Stars has to do with, uh, this is kind of oversimplifying it, but think of it like 
a darker, more adult, more noir esque version of Zootopia in anime form. Uh, basically, you have a society of anthropomorphic animals, both herbivores and carnivores, coexisting together. And, um, you know, but unlike Zootopia, where the carnivores, like, are only subjected to their, like, predatory instincts via that drug, uh, those predatory instincts and in carnivores are actually ever-present in carnivores in the world of Beastars, and uh, it's a constant struggle for them, and there are, like, you know, different adaptations within the world to help them cope with that. Um, and, you know, this um, the show itself focuses on um, a gray wolf named Lugosi, um, a red deer named Louie, and a white dwarf rabbit named Haru. And we follow their story as they, um, you know, come of age at Charrington High um, and uh, their various adventures. Again, without spoiling anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so... And also, one other thing that is interesting of note, which isn't spoiler. Unlike Zootopia, they actually, like, more explore the size difference. Mm-hmm. And also, like, the world itself, they, they explain more of, the, like, the smaller details that I always questioned about Zootopia. Um, they actually address them here mm-hmm. um, in, in Beastars. Especially one like, episode so- with a very interesting side character. Yeah, the world itself is very, very intricate. Yeah, the world itself is very, very intricate. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Brian, uh, you are finished it the most recently out of the two of us, as per usual. So, uh, what is uh, your what are your initial thoughts on B stars? Considering that you've never, you know, heard of the source material prior to this, I'm assuming you didn't uh, like try to dive into the manga after this because you know it's only like what, 30 minutes or so after you finished watching it, so um, you, you haven't done any of that. Well, so um... Just, yeah, just out of the anime by itself, like, what are your opinions? There is a little bit of history, though. Um, okay, interesting. Because um, as I was watching it, I was interested in, like, the voice actors, because some of them sounded familiar. Mm-hmm. So I, I googled it, and um, I noticed that the 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 manga image for Tagoshi? Uh, Lugosi. Lugosi? Yeah, he's named after, you know, the, the horror actor. Because, you know, monster. Yeah, oh. You know. Lugosi. The thing is, is I recognize that for some reason, and I believe I heard about this way back in the day when I was, like, Googling things coming to Netflix I think over a year ago and um, I was like huh that's interesting I think I might have even told you about it Jay I don't remember no I, I don't I, no, I've, I've, known, I've known about this for a few years now um, it's uh, like well, it's been on my radar well I guess I didn't time. tell you because it was only the manga at the time and they had no information uh, but mm-hmm. But yeah, and then Jay told me about it, and um, he's like, we're doing this, and gave me that soft premise, and I was like, okay, and so I started to check it out, and I really liked it. I even saw, like, uh, it seep into other places that I frequent as I'm watching it, and um, it definitely was weird even for me and went places I really didn't expect and yeah kind of some awkward feels but also some other weird feels and uh, in the end though I really liked it um I think the whole world is cool like you said they think about things that Zootopia never addressed but it does also seem though at a couple times that whoever made this at least maybe the anime had seen Zootopia because there are a few little slight references here and there 
I think. I can definitely see that. Um, but yeah, for me, I have been hyped about this show for a long time. I wanted to read the manga, but then I was like, no, 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 no. The show's coming out. I want to experience the show blind. Because if you read a source material before a show comes out, that tends to color your opinion on the show. And it tends to affect your opinion on the show, even if it's like slightly. So I wanted to go in blind so I have like like my own separate opinion on the anime without the manga affecting it. Um, and, you know, this... so. You know, normally I have the abil- I have the innate superpower to like watch shows in like one sitting, but I haven't really been able to do that because I haven't had time. But you know, considering cer- uh, current world circumstances, I've had time, and um, literally like I started it just to see how how it is, um, and because I was like, excited about it, and once I started, I just couldn't stop. I literally like stayed up till like six a.m. Uh, and finished it and i was texting brian i was like oh my god dude <laughs> like this is amazing uh, like we got to do this um and, and you could uh, if you look at my phone you can literally see the evolution of how it's going on where it's like well i have some free time thanks to the thanks to the current events so i'll check it out okay this is pretty good yeah, because like our, our our buddy Craig, our buddy Craig C Dub, uh, he uh, hit our group chat and was like, "Hey Jay, have you seen V Stars?" He goes, "I know this. Uh, I know you're the anime guy. Like, um, have you checked it out?" I was like, "Oh no, I heard about it, and, and I've been meaning to. I'll, I'll go watch it." And then so yeah, and that's how it, it just slowly went on to. Oh shit! This is going places I didn't expect. What the fuck? And then it's like we need to cover this. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Oh my god. And um so I'm not I'm obviously not gonna go into manga spoilers, but this was so good. And because my other superpower is speed reading, I binge read the manga and I am completely caught up. Holy shit. Okay, so the the first basically takes up the first forty eight chapters of the manga and we're currently on I wanna say it's like 66 or 168 something like Jesus. that so so just to put in perspective that's how much i read from chapter 48 up to 168 something like that uh somewhere around there um but yeah like it gets amazing and i mean it's already amazing but there is a lot of interesting stuff um and this is your spoiler warning, by the way. Uh, so, for my mm-hmm. mm-hmm. spoilers. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to say any manga spoilers, but to just give you a next time on Beastars. Um, because Season 2 is confirmed. They re- even released a teaser for Season 2 already. Um, but so, next time on Beastars. Next season, we are definitely going to find out who killed Tem. Because that's a whole arc. Um, and like the the confrontation of said killer, um, there's gonna be some a really interesting arc with Louis, like really really interesting. And manga fans, you will probably get chills by hearing this, but out of context, it will make no sense whatsoever. Maybe by season three, we will get Melon. Holy shit, Melon is insane. Um, and also. We get to learn about Lagosi's past and uh, his uh, lineage, uh, which is pretty interesting. Which it's something very small. Uh, there's a, a very small detail which they actually kept, you know, in uh, they kept consistent with the anime. Um, there is a small detail about Lagosi that you barely notice, uh, and you, you're probably not paying attention to, but it gives a clue to his heritage, and you find out about his heritage more specifically his grandfather that was you know briefly mentioned um in season one of the anime and uh it's it's really interesting uh but yeah dude b stars is fucking awesome uh i I loved it uh that i am a huge fan of character driven shows and character drama uh centric shows and this was a teen show technically because it was set in the high Mm -hmm. school and it starts off as, you know, your normal T 
teen show. Like, there's a romance subplot. There's a, a whole there's a whole drama club plot. And you know, you uh, if you have been with the podcast for a while and you saw our HSM TMTS episode, I'm a drama geek. So whenever there's a drama club plot, like <laughs> hell yeah. Um, and then it evolved into like uh, this whole social commentary about like ostracization, racism, uh, just uh, like the like importance of sexuality, what sexuality means to people, um, like the shaming of sexuality, all this other stuff. And then it evolved into like a crime thriller drama with fucking with a mafia and a black market and all this crazy shit. Like, oh my, this, this show was nuts. Absolutely and, insane. And, and honestly, it. one of my favorite side characters ends up being this this badass panda who who's yo Gohin is the who trained, trained himself panda. to to no longer be a carnivore. He's just on bamboo and is still mega ripped. Yeah, because he exercises a lot. Goheen is the shit. He is amazing. He continues to be oh, a supporting character. And you notice series. and you know something else about him, which I thought was the cool, funny, like extra add on. His preferred oh. weapon is not only a crossbow, a crossbow that shoots bamboo. <laughs> yep. Bamboo <laughs> arrows. Yeah. That's fucking yes, awesome. He is. Oh man. Okay, so let's so let's start from the beginning, I guess, because that's a very good place to start. Um, so it starts off like with this murder mystery, right? Like it opens up with Tem's murder, and you're just like, "Oh shit, someone got killed." What's Not happening? just killed. So they literally say devoured. Yeah, yeah, they were eaten alive. Like quite literally, they were devoured. Um, Tem the llama was, um, you know, murdered, and. You know, you, uh, without if you don't have any prior knowledge of the manga like I did, um, like I didn't have any prior knowledge of the manga just going into the story. Um, I was like, okay, so season one is going to be about finding out who killed Tim. No, actually, it's not. Like it's in the background the whole time, so you never forget about it. But it's not like a central. And it motivates thing, our characters at I, certain I like. points. Hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it de- it's definitely a driving force because Lugosi was very good friends with Tem, and uh, same with Louis as well. And uh, Louis very much cares. And there were Tem also and... times like the blackout where everyone gets worried about the killer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like you know that that's what I initially thought, and then like it you know turns into like this. Uh, love story and then i'm like oh okay so like this whole thing is gonna be about like lagosi and haru falling in love and it kind of was but it wasn't at the same and time. also um in typical i hate to even say this but in typical teen drama fashion you feel like ship confliction but yep. also, in just how this show is different and amazes you, one of the ones that I thought was going to be a potential ship interest ended up kind of being a villain. And mm-hmm. a bitch. A fucking bitch. Not going to go into manga spoilers. Uh, she's not a total bitch. And uh, she has a actual... She, she has... And a very, and a very unexpected, but also kind of expected ship option that is introduced later. That I was like interesting because oh, okay. I, I actually like thought that they hinted at one ship with her. Oh, the, 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 yeah, they did. And the, um, if you're if you're talking about the one that I think you are, uh, that 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 is where they go. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm not I'm not gonna say. I'm not going to say that for the anime only people. I'm just going to assume cuz me and Brian tend to think on the same wavelength. I'm pretty sure you 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 picked up on it. Yeah, no, that's where they go and it's really interesting. Um But yeah, uh so it's it's really cool because it, it takes a lot of the like teen drama tropes 
but it takes it into a much more serious, gritty, and adult mm-hmm. event, right? And it's really, it's really, really cool. Um, honestly, like, and this is gonna, uh, this is gonna sound negative, uh, because of the connotation this per- particular franchise has, but the dynamic and the romance, especially between Lagosi and Haru, is very much a Twilight like mm. romance, but it's you know done way better mm. because if you because you have like you have mm-hmm. the one party who is kind of the, the normal the normal love interest who is just like a regular you know person or in this case a regular small animal and you have like the big towering like monster esque like love interest who could very easily accidentally kill the person that they are in love with. Um, and if you like pay attention to like Lagosi's inner monologue, it is actually very, very Edward esque. But again, way better handled. I'm not, not I'm not even saying Twilight is any anywhere as good as B stars, but like it, it well, has a very similar like You know what the parallel. funny thing is? My thought what? went to which Oh yeah. Shoot. Which is funny considering its origins, but I kind of almost felt like it was a bit like also Fifty Shades, but better. Yeah, which is yeah, Fifty Shades is yeah a Twilight fan fiction. Yeah, no, it, it's very similar in in that regard. And um, you know, like the biggest selling point about B stars, not just the world, it's the the characters. The characters make it so fucking interesting. Um. And uh, like that's what makes this show so awesome. Every um, every like, character seems to have their own unique personality, and it's awesome. It's just like there are so many side characters that I wish they'd show more of. Like mm-hmm. um, I believe her name is Sally, the the squirrel. Oh yeah, yeah, Sally. Yeah, the squirrel. That I was like, that uh, Lugosi helped like crack her nuts because she has trouble. Like, but she's also her nuts like open. the smallest girl in the school. And when I say smallest, I don't mean like Lucy Hale small. I mean like, yeah, people could literally step on her and kill her. <laughs> yeah, and she's a very interesting, energetic type character yeah and she and she and she and she's one of the louis fan girls too i, I really and like that uh, i like i, I like forget that. his name now but i really like uh lugosi's golden retriever best friend yeah doggo I, I don't know his name either i just called him doggo the whole time doggo is great doggo is great i love him he's he's such a good character he's a good boy he's you know who he boy. kind of reminds um, me of almost uh, Ron Weasley. A little bit, but he's less bitchy and like annoying. <laughs> like, look, the Potter fan in me, the Potter fan in me. Like, I look, I love Ron, but I also hate Ron. I have a love hate relationship with him because, like, he's a great character, but man, those later books turn him into nearly unlikable. <laughs> but that's another podcast. For another time, um, I could do a whole episode just talking about that. Which um, HBO Max? Yeah, no, he, you own the yeah. Potter franchise, dude. Don't get me started. I could write for that. <laughs> I have been training for that my entire life. You know how much OC Potter fan fiction I've written over the course of my life. I mean, it's just it's just it's there. Lot. I mean, just case in point. Real quick, I'm not going to go on a whole tangent about it, but if you guys ever want to like look at the possibilities, just TikTok. Just go to TikTok Hogwarts Professors. Yep, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so back to the side characters. Um, yeah, all the side characters are really interesting. You know, Brian alluded to it earlier. Um, in episode seven, we get like a short story about Legome, of uh, this hen who like sells eggs to. Um, like the school cafeteria for the egg sandwiches. Um, she's really interesting and in how she takes pride in her work. And how she and doesn't do it for other people or the cafeteria. Yep. She does um, it for herself. And she's yep. so dedicated to it that she won't, like, won't stay out late because it affects her eggs. 
Yep, and you know she felt really hurt when um like Lagosi, who is like who loves the egg sandwiches, he ate. He was like, no, oh, I haven't been getting them because they just taste different lately. And then he, then she finds out it's a mix up, and like her egg sandwiches are actually served on Fridays, not Wednesdays. So because they're so popular, is, you know. Yeah, so he is actually still a fan of her eggs, and she's um, and she's so dedicated to it that she like slips it in his lunch mm-hmm. on Friday. Yep, and she passes out when he says that whole like I'm not in, I'm not into it. Like uh, they just taste different. Um, also, um, another side character I want to briefly mention. I um I love this character a lot. Um, um is the uh, the sheep. I don't remember her name, but the sheep chick. Um, who is uh who is Tem? Mm-hmm. Um, because like at first, because of what happened to Tem, she's very scared of carnivores, and when Lagosi approaches her. Like, she, understandably, is freaked the fuck out. And she's like, back away from me. I'm, I'm not going to let you eat me like you did, Tem. Like, I don't trust you carnivores. Like, understandably so, because of the situation that just happened. But Lagosi is like, hey, so I just wanted to give you this. Um, this is, um, Tem was going to give this to you the day he, well, you know. And um, I, um, I knew his locker combination because we both worked on... Uh, the uh, like the equipment crew for the drama club and uh you know sometimes we stored our supplies in each other's lockers so i you know i got this and uh, i figured you should have this and it's uh you know his love letter confession to the sheep girl and you know after this she's like oh my god i'm so sorry i didn't mean to misjudge you you're a generous wolf i'll make sure everyone knows this um, yeah you know it was really cool and i, I really like their friendship because you know he does kind of lean on her a little bit um throughout in uh, little moments um like throughout when he's like really questioning himself about like can he give in to those instincts yeah it she's really cool and unlike other shows the dead people have a lasting effect like well granted there mm-hmm. was like i think it was an antelope who died off screen that we didn't know but at least yeah one character had a longing effect like we see multiple times him in flashbacks and all and Tim actually becomes yeah, and, like a significant character in the show even though he died pretty early on yeah he died in the first ep- like in the first minutes of the first episode and like you you still see his mm-hmm. memorial like that sec- that hallway where he was murdered in is still like sectioned and- off like it's a it's a very like it's a long lasting effect all and throughout one more side character just real quick. Go show you this show about like mm-hmm. expectations and all that. Um, I really liked the eagle guy. I forgot his name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the eagle. Yeah, because I, I don't know his name either. Because he's, cool he's technically a carnivore, so he hangs out with the carnivores. And there's the point with the finger where you think that he's. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to participate because he doesn't back down when the others are like, yeah, we're going to pay for this dude's finger, so we're going to eat and, it. Um, and then and, later we see him, and he didn't do it. Yeah, he comes back to Legos. He's like, hey, I'm sorry. I, like, I couldn't like stand up. I couldn't back you up in front of them. But just so you know, I didn't do it, and I felt really bad. That's why I had to you know, come to you and apologize. And really he cool. gives, um, he gives wanna, Legosi I, hope that Predators... That, um, not predators, uh, no, it's still predators, carnivores and predators, are the same thing. Okay. they call them both. That carnivores can be like civilized people, he gives them hope, yeah. Um, so one care, one more side character I want to mention. I promise this will be the end of our little side character lightning round, uh, but one last side character I want to mention because I want to get into the meat of our three main characters, pun intended. Um, uh, is the Harlequin mm. Rabbit chick. I fucking hate her. I hate her so much. You know, she is so bad that she makes Regina George look like a saint. I hate her. I was like, alright, look, see if you really want some rabbit, you can eat her. I don't, I don't think nobody would be, no one would be mad at you if you ate her. And at one point, you do see, like, her motivation, and you maybe start to feel a little bit for her. Yeah, like you, you, you kind of, you kind of get it because of like what Haru quote unquote did. 
But also, Haru isn't the only one at fault in that situation. So, like, why are you just Also, after we find uh, out, she still continues to be a bitch. And, like yep. I said, yep. makes Regina George look like a saint. Yeah, seriously. I, I, fucking, I fucking hate her. Hate her so fucking much. Um, but, yeah, now let's get into the main characters. Uh, I want to start this off with Haru, and then we're going to end all with right, cool. so Obviously, there's a lot to talk about with all three of these mm-hmm. characters, but I want to start with Haru. Haru, she is such an interesting main female lead, because in a lot of these stories, the love interest is either like objectified as this like pure maiden who, you know, like who, who the protagonist pines for, or she's like the antithesis of that where she's like the total badass like strong independent woman don't need or, no man and like the sorry i was okay. just gonna say or okay. combination of both sao yep um, i mean sao for the first season because after season after season one uh, like she just kind of becomes that's why i said stress. combination of both yeah uh but yeah so but haru She's 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 an interesting middle ground because people definitely see her in the traditional sense, especially because she's a bunny. And I want to just take a little little second of time to, to put on my like psychological and literary analysis hat. Um, if you think about the bunny, right, the rabbit is an animal that is always explicitly associated with sex, um, and the main reason for that is, of course, because rabbits in like the animal kingdom are in heat year round. There's a reason why there's like the the, the expression fucking like rabbits because rabbits are always fucking and, and having like dozens and dozens of babies. Um, you know, they, if you think about the iconography associated with rabbits and even in pop culture, you got she isn't technically a rabbit rabbit, but Jessica rabbit. You got Lola Bunny, like I said, the most iconic sex symbol in the world. The Playboy, mm-hmm. but but um, while we're super serial here and going on this tangent and all that, I recently found this out. If you go back, the whole bunny sex um stuff goes all the way back to ancient Egypt. Where you can see hieroglyphs mm-hmm. of of bunny like figures. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and Haru, like the way the way they address her feelings towards sex. Um, so most people in the society they tend to coddle her and treat her like she's this fragile being, this little innocent. Well, because she's not they just her like a, a rabbit. She's a dwarf rabbit, so she's a smaller rabbit than even the average rabbit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, people tend to coddle her and treat her like a baby, even though she's like a full-grown adult rabbit. Um, and, but the only time, and but then she's re- and no one really sees her for who she is. No one treats her as an equal. She and then she realized the one the one time that she actually is seen as a person mm-hmm. and seen as an equal to someone. Um, in this intimate moment, is when she's having sex with people. And so she's decided, okay, if this is the only really w- real way I can connect with people, then I'm just going to have sex with a bunch of people. Um, it's my body. I'm going to do what I want with it. Uh, this, is, th- th- this makes me feel good, both in a physical sense and a metaphorical sense. So whatever. Like, sure, it caused me to lose some friends. It caused a bunch of rumors to go around about me, but fuck them. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really respect that. Uh, it's a very, like, I, I always love sex positive messages in media, and uh, this is definitely one of them. And, um, you know, even though, like, this word technically, you know, even though this word has, a like, a dirty connotation to it, thanks to uh, the internet and certain people that claim this label, this is a very, like, po- positive feminist kind of, like, stance, like, actual feminist stance. Um, and I really appreciate it. Like, it's it's pretty awesome. Haru is such a good complex character because like all three of these characters deal with some form of like 
self-loathing, depression, mm-hmm. like self-hatred, and they deal with it in different ways. Haru deals with it by connecting with people through and sex. like cutting um, herself and off to the fact from yeah, from actually being in love with people. She just uses the sex to get the temporary mm-hmm. connection. However, she does experience love when two particular people, our two protagonists, connect to her in different ways. Louis um, allows himself to be vulnerable around Haru, and so she sees the real him, and so that gives her the opportunity to open up and be real with him as well. And that's how they fall in love. Lagosi, from Jump, never like heard any of the rumors, never like saw anything about her besides who she was and what she did for the plants and the flowers. Well, also, the, the, oh shit, that's the girl I almost killed. Mm -hmm. But, but yes, she is a very interesting character and, like, they even, like, get to the, the, um, as we used to call them, love motels. Um, yep. That uh, that's what they. I feel like that's what okay. they're still called. I thought that was a colloquialism thing, uh, but um, no, that's for a... uh, for because uh, I was in Japan, um, but no, I'm no. letting people know out there, reminding them. Um, but oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, got it. But yeah, even when they're there, she just like immediately goes for the karaoke. See if there's a karaoke machine. She knows her way around it. And he's like, you've been here before and uh, been to these type of places before. And she's like, yeah. 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 Yeah, I really like that. I really like that about her. She's a very interesting character. And again, uh, not to go into manga spoilers, but like she has a very interesting like growth arc that is surprisingly separate from her two leads, which I really like because, you know, a lot of times when a character is introduced explicitly as a love interest, their growth and development tends to be tied to their relationship. Yeah, and, so, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, you'll have this really cool ship and one of them will fall to the wayside. Because, because their development is, and, and any of their screen time is o- always only strictly de- uh, devoted Tony. to their relationship. <laughs> Tony Topin. <laughs> <laughs> we both <laughs> We were thinking about the same thing. Yes. I mean, for sure. I mean, and it's always a common trope, especially in YA slash yep. teen stuff. And I, that's why, like, without spoiling it, I'm really glad they don't, like, um, Itagaki doesn't go that way with Haru nice. in the manga. Like, she has her own thing. She has her own development as she goes to college because she is older than Lugosi and Louis, so she graduates first. Okay, cool. Um... um... I will like that's not a spoiler because you know like yeah you know that she's like older, when but, like yeah in the probably infamous scene she also admits that she's eighteen so mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. um but yeah um I will say uh, there were a couple times that um given like her reaction to love and the fact that she's even though she's very small, she's a very um, like strong personality. Oh yeah, she has a bit. She has a very she big kind of at times. Sure. Almost reminded me of Robin Shabatsky. I could totally see that. Um. Yeah. No. Haru is just she's an amazing character, you guys. Um. So now we're gonna move on to quite possibly my favorite character of the show. Definitely the most Louis. surprising. Yeah, Louie. Holy shit, Louie. Okay, so this isn't exactly the same character arc, like, but it is very, it's, it, like, it has some elements of it. My favorite character arc in all of ya is the good, uh, the, like, the bitch with the heart of gold. Now, this isn't exactly the route Louie goes on. Um, but it's similar. Louis has Louis has a massive heart, but he when he first shows up, he is such an arrogant, bigoted dick, mm-hmm. and you just 
at, when you first meet him, you just I'm like, oh, you fucking suck. I don't I don't like you. You're 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 mean to my, you're mean to my awkward doggo. Leave my awkward doggo alone. Leave my socially awkward doggo yeah. alone. He doesn't mean it. Which, which is interesting though, because kind of um, similar character arc to Lizzie. No, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Like, you know, like he was one of those ones. That it took a while. It took to like the halfway point of the season. Very similar to Lizzie, <laughs> but like once we got his backstory, and I was like, oh shit. It all clicked mm-hmm. now. Damn, dude. I feel so bad for you. It, it, oh. it feels like... Because I got to tip my hat to them because they definitely, with Louie, brought up feelings of, I will just say, big American events without actually saying them or, like, completely copying them or disrespecting the real life people. It was just a story that was mm-hmm. kind of inspired by those events. Yep, yep, yep. Especially with the fact that he has a number branded on him. I'll just say that. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, like his so he starts off like just being like this this dude who hates carnivores because he's like clearly jealous. He has his own form of self-hatred um and then like as the story goes on you realize why you realize like that he is the perfect foil to Lugosi where Lugosi he has this strength in abundance but he purposely like acts weaker he uh tries he like you know slouches he does all these things to appear more friendly and approachable um um but he just can't because of his just outward mannerisms as naturally as a carnivore whereas louis he seems like the most uh, more approachable more charismatic but he craves that strength because deep down in the back of his mind he will always see himself as that weak little deer that was in that cage branded with that number always meant to die and louis he has this strong suicidal streak that is like a big part mm-hmm. of the character that you know isn't isn't resolved till much later in the manga, um, and you understand why that is, and like it's very similar to Lugosi, which is why like they are two sides of the same coin. They're both dual protagonists here, um, and you know throughout the story you see stuff from both you know Lugosi and Louis' perspective, and I also just love how much Lugosi idolizes Louis because Lugosi sees Louis as the pinnacle of the future. He's like, this is what we need. He is the B star that needs, he is the one who needs to become the B star. He's the one that can change the world. I'm not going to be able to do it, but Louis can. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. like when you find out the whole fact of the, the matter that, the drama club, everybody has something unique about them. They're all kind of outcasts. And it's all it's all in their backstory somewhere. Um you will find out Lugosi's next season and man, oh dude, it's just like, well shit. They as if I didn't as if I didn't feel I think they kind of hinted at it already. Not well, I mean, they, they don't, with they the don't whole say scars. Oh, well, those scars are, I mean, the, the scars that he got were from Bill and from all the stuff that happened now. Like, that, those oh. were recent scars. Those weren't from his childhood. Those were from all the events that happened. He, he said to Haru, I got all these from, uh, this all start, all those scars started from when I met you. Oh. When I first met you. But, yeah, to definitely have that defeatist kind of personality you can tell something happened um oh yeah no it, and it'll it, be it's, interesting it's, to see it's, some, it's definitely what something it is from... but but back to mm-hmm. louis though louis is all about the perfect image and trying to be the perfect to become the beast star um like even when he's 
one of the moments that like bonds him and Haru is the fact that he loses his antlers. Yeah, he has to shed his antlers because as deer get older, they shed their antlers yeah. and get bigger ones. Well, the bucks do it. Yeah, but he doesn't want to show that he doesn't have antlers because it's an image thing. So yeah, 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 he tries to pay her off so that he can stay at the garden club while he buys new ones, new fake ones, to keep up the image until his until yeah until his permanent ones keep throw up in, the yeah. image because that's what he's all about. I mean, the man, the man almost permanently damages himself. Yeah. Look, this man has such dedication to his craft and his art. You've heard stories about like Michael Jordan playing Game Seven with this severe flu, and he was able to like you know pull through in the game. But at the end of the game, he passes out and is rushed to the hospital. Louis does the same shit. He performs a fight scene on a broken leg. Mm-hmm. His leg is straight up shattered, and he's still a full fight scene. He does a full on day oh of performing God. before before he he laments and gives the role over to someone else. But also yeah, in the Bill. same vein, he then has to on the second day go on that broken leg to fight the dude that he gave the role to. To protect poor Lugosi. Lugosi, Lugosi yeah. And mm-hmm. he apparently, Which... if you go by like hearing what happened, uh, finished out the play. Yep. And like, if you if you really think about it, like Bill is Bill is an interesting character. I want to bring him into this discussion with Louis um, because Bill is exactly what Louis hates. More than more so than Lagosi. Lagosi, he understands because he he also has those feelings to an extent. But Bill, he is a carnivore that's full of like carnivore pride and all this stuff. So this is this is everything Louis hates about carnivores. Mm-hmm. So when he sees that someone like Bill is picking on someone like Lagosi, he sees himself in Lagosi, and so he tries to protect him in that way. And, and I, I think that's and really also awesome. the fact that he. Is so dedicated to the craft that he he sees that Bill is um, using basically this universe's kind of steroids. Yes, yeah, yeah the yeah the animal equivalent to steroids, rabbit blood. And he sees the blood, and he doesn't even care. He's like, I don't care yep. if you juice, just. Don't bring it out on the stage. Yeah, just, yeah, just don't fuck up my yeah. play. Like, yeah, no, and uh, you know, um, you know, obviously Louis has the bits of like mental instability. Um, given his background, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, he's severely traumatized. Um, they actually cut this scene out, um, so it doesn't really. So there's no real hint at it. Um, for the later on when we get to the mafia scene with Louis, but um, after the whole ordeal with Bill. He actually threatens Bill at gunpoint to never do that type of shit again. I can see it. Um, um, and he's like, "Don't fuck with Lagosi. Don't, don't, don't be doing any of this stuff anymore. If you step out of line, I will ruin your entire life." Um, um, and uh, like that, 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 um, that scene is very important to establish, like, uh, like to give you set up to be like okay louis can fly off the handle like fly, fly oh. off the handle, which, mm. which which what which which what which is what leads us to seeing that later scene with the uh shishigumi lion mob boss where he so, he's where he gone is. like that scene is like something you typically see from like an arkham patient yeah. Okay. So, 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 I, what I find interesting about this one, um, what about uh, like Louis's role in the uh, Haru rescue arc? So, he is perfectly happy with Lagosi playing the hero because he sees like this is the role he's meant to play. 
right? Because like he uh like he is clearly a better match for Haru, even if he if like Louis himself is in love with Haru. Lugosi is a better match for her and she'd be, he'd be better for her than he could ever be because Louis can't fully dedicate himself to Haru because his entire life is planned out and all that other stuff. So he contents himself to playing the role of the villain. Um, and he intentionally, um, like, you know, goes up and he caps the lion mob boss who Lugosi didn't finish off. Um, and he is temp- he, 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 yell- he keeps yelling and tempting the other members of the lion mob to eat him. Um, mm. Now, obviously, Louie is a main character, so he's not going to die. Um, I kind of thought that he did. He didn't. Yeah, I got that. You will see. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I know that they left it cliffhangery, but uh, he's a main I'm going to tell you right now, he's a main character. He ain't going to die. Uh, he ain't going to die. I'm not going to tell you what happens next. It leads into his arc that's going to be in next season. Uh, but it is, like, heavily tied to what happened right after the, right after this and, like, you know, why he is not eaten. I mean, it leads into his development and um, him eventually actually, like, forming bonds with carnivores and letting go of his hatred towards carnivores. Nice. I'll, 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 just, I'll just say that. Although um, it also has me kind of weak, kind of fearful that it also means, like, villain path. Oh, he's not a villain. He's not a villain. Um, I'll I'll say that right off bat. He is more of definitely more of an anti-hero, and in current standing, he's definitely transitioned fully back onto the hero path. But he stays anti-hero a long time, and eventually transitions into full-on hero. All right, cool. Um, back well, back into full-on hero. Again, I'm not going to fully spoil, but yeah, that's basically the path it seems that Louis is on. Nice. Um, it's really interesting, and like I said, his um his new ship. Um, is a big part of it, um, which is, you know, heavily implied in a particular scene that we see him in with another character uh, that we didn't really talk about. But, um, you know, we don't have time to talk about every character because this uh, anchor has a two hour time limit. Um, hour and a half. But yeah, hour and a half. Um, well, two hours is the uh, exact max. Um, oh, but yeah. So. Well, um, so, yeah, but. Um, yeah, so that's so that's Louis. Um, you know, any further talk of him, I'd have to go into like manga spoilers. But he is fucking amazing, dude. Like, oh my, he's so com. He's the most complex character. I feel like. Yeah. Because you can never pin him down. He is very unpredictable. He is the he's the Jason Todd to Lugosi's like Superman. I don't know if I'd say Lugosi or, is or. No, Superman. no, he's Lugosi's bat. No, Lugosi's Batman. He's definitely yeah. Batman. Yeah. yeah, he's he's the Jason Todd to Lugosi's Bruce Wayne. Batman. Minus yeah. the oh, yeah, father that's, that's son analogy. angle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like because if you really think about it, Louis is more of a big brother to Lugosi, but yeah, no, definitely like in terms of dynamic, it's a it's a Jason Todd Bruce Wayne type of thing because he Lugosi, he's like. He straight up becomes Batman later on. Um, so, um, without go, without like fully going into like manga spoilers again, um, I, I guess I should kind of explain what the B star is because they don't really tell you in the first season. But the B star is essentially a rank given to someone, um, given um, to by the people due to their work in society. Um, and, uh, like, it basically gives, like, not necessarily control of the world, but a huge sway within the world. Um, the current B-Star is a friend of Lugosi's grandfather, and he is basically, like, he, he used to be kind of a vigilante-esque character. Hmm. Um, they were kind of a superhero team and like Lugosi's grand but Lugosi's grandfather dipped for particular reasons, which I'm not going to spoil. Um I've spoiled a little bit, but not enough for you to like really know. Um, Interesting. Like I had no idea about this stuff. But but yeah, Louis Louis's a really cool character. Uh, he's very complex. Um he 
has his moments of like crazy, but definitely Louis's biggest thing that you can see is down to trauma. Yeah, and I mean, you even see that with like his relationship with his dad that we even we saw in the flashback, his adopted father, um, you know, Genma. I thought his name is like Genma, or something like that. Yeah, um, and and the dick bag mayor. Mm-hmm. Yo, by the way, that mayor is terrifying because of the fucking teeth. Honestly, he'd be less scary if he had fangs, because the human teeth on a lion is the stuff of fucking nightmares. Mm-hmm. Well, that and the fact that it's kind of like the um the whole thing of like horror movies where it's the nice person is the killer and they're nice to you right up until they kill you. Yeah, no, uh, but yeah, um, that's Louis' character. Uh, he is uh, pretty amazing. So now, in this like last little section of uh, our discussion, let's talk about our favorite self-conscious, anxious, self-hating, sad doggo, Lugosi. Um, oh, man. <laughs> if you want to talk about a character that is a whole mood, it's fucking Lugosi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, this guy... Like, everybody can relate to Lugosi. Um, I mean, I can definitely relate to Louis in some aspects where, like, you know, being a perfectionist can sometimes, like, drive you insane. Um, Especially when, you know, you're, like, obsessed with improving, like, you know, whatever you create. Um, Like, creative people, like, definitely relate to Louis on that end of the spectrum but everyone can also relate to Lugosi on the end of the spectrum where like you know you sometimes just don't feel like you're good enough you don't feel like you deserve certain things Um, Mm -hmm. you're always like second guessing yourself you're always saying well I don't know I don't know um yeah I was gonna say I definitely thought about certain people (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, indeed. Uh, hence, hence, nudge, nudge, cough, cough. Indeed. Yeah, Brian. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, he's he's super. He's a super relatable character. He's really sweet. Um, whereas Louis, you have to dig through a bunch of layers to find his heart of gold. Like Lagosi's heart of gold is right on his sleeve. Um, and um, his big journey is learning to accept himself fully um like the whole fight with bill on stage that was a um like you know a pretty obvious metaphor for him like beating the part of him like like beating the part of himself that he hates because bill represents everything um about himself that he hates um and so he just literally beat the shit out of bill because he hates himself for it and for what he did to haru especially because in particular Bill was using rabbit's blood, which was the scent that triggered Lugosi's whole episode in episode two, where he attacked Haru. Yep, and um, also, um, the signaling. He also has a metaphor for his like insecurities and all that. With the other significant death of the show, poor oh, Beatley. Yeah. Oh yeah, poor Beatley. 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 No, that was sad. Yeah, yeah, that was. But the then the like, almost like poetic cinematic thing of right before the fight with the big boss. Yeah, when the spirit of Beatley landed on his shoulder, I was like, oh. And it, like, flew away, like, right as he was, like, going into, like, fully embracing himself, rage mode. Yeah, and, you know, those are always awesome. The moment when he goes full-on predator mode and he starts, like, beating ass. Which, um, by the way, just a quick question. Mm -hmm. Is the red, is, like, the red going through his veins... Is that just like symbolic? No, yeah, yeah. That's just sim- that's just anime anime dressing, so you like know what's happening. Or like in, in 
like in in, in the manga when he goes predator mode it just kind of happens there's no like transformation sequence but to make things more like you know show yeah and i dramatic they do the whole i get you sequence i just thing. had to ask because with anime you never know Oh yeah, no, I get it. That's, that's why I'm. That's why I'm happy to play. I about. mean, it yeah, no. it almost kind of reminds me a little bit of Super Saiyan. It is very much like a, it, uh, the anime. Very much presents it like a Super Saiyan type thing for sure. Um, especially because and, um, early in the show, Goku went Super Saiyan when he was mad. And like you know, he starts to glow and everything too, with like the red aura and shit. So yeah, no, I, t- I totally get that. Uh, but no, that's uh, yeah, that's just a, a specifically anime thing. But I like it. I mean, I know a lot of people don't, but I, I think it's a cool effect. It, it um, is, and I like the effect with him and the the synths. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like how the animation style changes when he's like in his head, like you know, beating down on himself. Hmm. Um. And, like, the animation gets all fuzzy. Like, you stupid piece of shit. Why don't you just talk to her? Like, come on. Don't say something fucking stupid. It almost, if you know this reference, it almost kind of reminds me of the video game Caroline. Mm-hmm. I could tell. Yeah, and definitely. also, if we're talking um, about, like, animation styles, just gotta throw it out real quick. The awesome, like, claymation. Oh, the fucking stop mo- Yeah, the stop motion fucking intro. Yeah. Dude, that opening sequence is awesome, and I love how jazzy it sounds. It's so fucking good. Yep. It's awesome. I, I love but it. But back um, to our little doggo. Yep, yep. So, yeah, man. He, he's, so, he's so sweet, and, like, you, 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 feel, you feel real bad for him. And, um, you know, I guess this is the perfect time to bring her up. Um, when Juno first shows up, mm-hmm. right? Like, you think, uh, you think uh, she's going to be like, oh. She's being bullied. We gotta protect her. She seems so sweet. No, actually, Juno's very confident, very strong, and very strong-willed. And honestly, like, no pun intended, but also pun intended, she's kind of a bitch. Not just kinda. She's she's kind of that, like, bitch that... She's a two-faced yep. bitch, because she'll, she'll smile in your face while insulting you. Mm-hmm. And like, there was a time where I was like, okay, so uh, are they maybe going to swerve on us and have Lagotzi and Juno be a couple and Haru and Louie be a couple? And there was a time yeah, where nope. I was like, I wouldn't be too upset with that until we see her true but, side. Yep, yeah, and... But that true side matches up with a certain somebody that we were talking about earlier. And that was hinted at. And I like it. We haven't seen much more of it in the manga. We've seen little bits. But it's there. It, it's there. She's she's confessed to this character. I'll let y'all put two and two together. I'm sure. But Brian already knows. Like He, he put it together once I mentioned it. Oh. I think I get it. I mean, there, there's only one other male character that she meaningfully interacted with, so, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, oh, okay, okay. I was going in a different I'm direction. Kidding. No, there's, li- I was going to say, there's, o- there's literally only one other character she had a meaningful interaction with that also involved dance. I just, I thought it was someone that she was looking at at the end. Nope. Because I'll just go ahead and say it. I thought it was going to be Tiger. Bill. Nah, it was not Bill. Uh, but you're honest. You're on uh, kind of a similar, uh, the right track. But no, no, no. It was, it was that guy. Now I'm going to say who. But that guy. I know who. Now. But yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, you know, she's really interesting. Um I'm glad they avoided the love triangle trope. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Lagosi is just like, nope. I'm I'm all about that Haru. Sorry, you're a, you're a good friend and all, but I'm good. And they do do a triangle, but they don't go beyond that. It's a one sided triangle. Like it's not one of those triangles like in a, like in a Julie Peck show where like. They constantly have to be like, I, who are you going to choose? Is it going to be Landon? 
Is it gonna be a joke? Well, they kind of do that with Haru. Gonna... I mean, a little bit. Um, but eventually, um, she realizes Louie ain't coming for her. Which mm-hmm. is like in the blackout moment, when like Lagosi comes, she thinks it's Louie, and is like, "Oh shit, it ain't Louie." That was the moment when like that side of the triangle officially died. You know, like, nah, nah Louie is obviously not gonna be here for me, but he is. So. Go well, when she thought that she was gonna die, she still said that she loved Louie. Oh, she, I mean, she's always gonna love Louie in that, like, first love sense, you know what I mean? Like, you never really stop loving your first love, because they are... All right. But, um, it can get a little hard sometimes, though. I mean, it really depends on what circumstances you leave, uh, you leave off of with your first love. Because, I mean, with Haru and Louie, yeah, definitely. No, I was talking about something there's... else, and I think you know. Uh, oh, uh, wait, what? I, I'm, I'm, complete, I'm completely missing it here. You, IRL. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm de- yeah, no, I'm definitely. Yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck her. Um, th- wow, this is like the second. This is the second episode in a row where I've mentioned this. But yeah, no, yeah. I'm sure. But anyway, um, um like... back to our little boy, our, our favorite little awkward doggo. I love the fact that he actually does have those awkward moments, and it's like he kind of has a little bit of that like stuck in his own head anime protagonist. Yeah, but, and also, he's, like, super strong, and he could be, like, this competent anime protagonist that's, like, always jumping into danger, which he kind of is, but, like, he's he's learning to grow into that, and I, I like that journey. But but he's not the stereotypical starts off as a bitch boy protagonist, which I hate. I hate that trope so much. He's not a crying little bitch. No. He knows when to he knows when to step up and be like, "All right, it's time for me to fucking kill." Somebody. But he definitely has moments where it's just like, "Um, uh, I don't know what to do." Yeah, um, and I also just like his like his um, the different father figures in his life, like you know, like Stork the the Stork drama mm-hmm. teacher is a good like is a good like you know father figure. Is he a stork or is he like, I, you know, the bird I think he's, teacher that's voiced he's by... They're stork or pelican. Yeah, one of those. But yeah, he uh, voiced by Kyle LeBear, a.k.a. Adult but, Gohan. Um, but yeah. um, But yeah. Like the drama teachers, uh, one, uh, like uh, like a uh, like almost a pseudo father figure for him. Goheen is definitely a father figure mm-hmm. for him um, and a, a, a big mentor. Uh, he is actually like... Uh, this is a slight spoiler. I, I can't help but spoil this one. I, I, I kind of mentioned it a little bit. But Goheen next season will be uh, like, will be really Lagosi's mentor in training him to become uh, like a badass a vigilante, which is where we learn kind of his grandpa's nice. story about his whole past of being a vigilante. Nice, but, but um, yeah. And also... One other thing that goes to like the elements of the show and like how it subverts expectations in some typical anime, when the protagonist just like starts thinking in his head, everyone around it will just ignore him or act like it's not happening. And here they're like, Go see, dude, are you okay? Hey, hey, bro, <laughs> yo, which was really cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty uh, like B stars is a really it's it's a very it it can get very heavy and very serious at times, but it has a very good balance of humor and like lighthearted fun mm-hmm. moments, which I which I really appreciate because like it gives us br- uh, like points to breathe after all this like crazy shit that's going mm-hmm. on. But yeah, so that's basically it for B star season one. We will definitely cover season two when it comes out. Like, um. I'm I'm gonna actively make room when this happens because Beastars is fucking mm-hmm. amazing. Um. Uh. So Brian, any closing thoughts before we get into the um? This was a very good surprise. I will admit that there are times, like in the hotel scene, where I feel a little too awkward watching, but. 
and the and the and the garden room scene, which everybody talks about. Yeah, but uh, overall, it was really good. It was kind of a uh, mixed bag here of like genres, and it was really cool. I like mm-hmm. I, and the, 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 yeah, those different genres. Like, it can get really dramatic well. at yeah. times, suspense, thriller e, but then also could get really funny. And then really just normal drama, dramatic, and then and like some and good feels too. Good, like, and then like also some moments of just like utter badassness. Yeah, every time there's a fight, it's fucking. And awesome. I really like the blend. I know for some people the whole animal thing could be a little hard to get over, but and also something I want to mention. I know a lot of people, like especially in the anime community in particular view 3D as the devil. But honestly, I think this would have been weird in 2D. I think 3D added for a lot, like, a better expression and better fluidity for the animation. I mean, look at those fucking fights! Oh my Mm -hmm. god! And how they were able to use cinematography and the camera angles, just absolutely amazing. Isn't this, like, what they technically call, like, 2.5D? Yeah, technically, yeah. And I think it worked. Oh, yeah. All right. So those are our closing thoughts on Beastars. Uh, so now we are getting into that special time of the night where Brian and I both tell you what is coming up on our individual channels for Brian, Blair, and YouTube. For me, uh, specifically just Blair. And update, I just made partner a couple days ago recording this video. Nice. Or days ago. So you got guys can officially like subscribe to me like it's almost it almost works like a patreon s system where you like do a monthly subscription and you can help your boy out uh, you know don't you know donate five dollars a month so i can you know invest it right back into the channel and do bigger and better content and projects for you guys um obviously you don't have to i'm not putting a paywall uh, you know up on any of my content you can still watch everything for free and just follow me but if you got that extra cash and you really like my content and want to help me out that, that's the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, Brian, what is coming up for you this week and what have you done um, this past well, week? Well, I hadn't done much this last week because um, I'm still kind of getting over this like undiagnosed bronchitis and um, I, any time of long talking would get me to cough. I still do the odd cough every once in a while. Um, my I will I will see um, by the time, but um, last week I just did Roswell the premiere because that show was so good to me on the channel and I loved it, so I had to cover its premiere. And then I covered Legends of Tomorrow because Ray's my boy and I couldn't let his goodbye episode go without saying something. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but um, hopefully, even though a lot of the shows are on break, the ones that aren't, I will hopefully get around to. Um, are the shows coming tomorrow? Um, so uh, Riverdale, uh, like the Wednesday shows are all still on hiatus. Um, Flash and Legends are on a break. <laughs> um. Uh, they, I don't. I think they're back. The Sunday ones are back. I want to say, not entirely sure. I'll have to look that up. But hope maybe. if if they are, then I might be covering them. At the very least, Supergirl, um, Batwoman. I might because it's been pretty good lately. Um, but won't hold anything to that. I know that Roswell's coming back, so I will be doing episode two. Of Roswell on Monday. Then uh, Tuesday is nothing. Wednesday is nothing. Uh, Thursday is... Legacy. And Katie. And Katie Keen. I believe Katie's still there. Yeah, because they didn't say anything about Katie going on. So I will try to cover those. And then Friday... 
If I can, I will try to cover Owl House. And uh, that leads us to Saturday. Yeah, so uh, Saturday is a show that, you know, um, I kind of had to push, I had to push off because I, you know, moved shows around. But we're finally doing On My Block Season 3, which I'm excited for because I've heard good things. Um, I haven't finished the season yet uh, because I ended up watching other stuff. Uh, but uh, that is what we're going to be doing. Uh, we have done previous episodes of Channel Chasers covering the first two seasons. Unfortunately, those no longer exist because my channel no longer exists. All right, which is still uh, but, bull. Yeah, you know. But hey, I've got another. I've, but now I'm I'm back as a paid content creator. I uh, kind of. Uh, so I'm I'm not not mad at it entirely. Um, but yeah. Uh, speaking of which, because the uh, uh, you know the um, the shows are on break, I've kind of like switched things up and done other things. Uh, so, for example, this week, uh, Superman uh, Red Sun was released on uh, VOD and digitally, um, and uh, so I decided, hey, you know what, I got time, I'm gonna watch this. So I put up a review of Superman Red Sun. The DC animated movies continue to be pretty damn awesome. Uh, Red Sun's one of my favorite Elseworld stories, and they knocked it out of the park. Really enjoyed it. Um, so there's that. Uh, I did a review of B Stars. Uh, watch that opening. I, I had a lot of fun with that. I made the same kind of joke with Lola Bunny. Um, it's, uh, watch that video. It's a lot, I had a lot of fun making it. It's a 20 minute video. One of the perks of being a partner, I can now make long form videos again, which is awesome. Um, so there's that. Um, also did Owl House, did Legends, uh, did da, 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 da. I was gonna do Motherland, uh, but then like I ended up falling asleep. Um, like I literally fell asleep in the middle of like not in the middle of recording, but like while editing, and then I was just like I, I like half edited it, and I was like, "Now nah, forget <laughs> it, I'm just not gonna do it." Um, and and then I uh, then I did Legacies uh, on Thursday. Um, I, I, I am watching Candy Keen, but, like, we were recording the podcast on Thursday, so, like, I, I like, missed the first 20 minutes. Um, so that's why I didn't do that. Uh, but uh, I also did Owl House, and I did um, uh, da, 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 something else that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, but uh, next week, I'll be doing um, a special project that I'm uh, actually working on as we speak. I've been kind of editing in the background. Uh, it's 10 shows to social distance to. These are uh, like kind of quarantine binge recommendations uh, like for you guys if you are you know stuck at home, which you should be. Stay inside. Mm-hmm. And wash your hands. Um, and watch these shows. Spoiler alert, Beastars is, is in fact on this list. Uh, it's going to be a fun video. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, and, uh, you know, like Brian said, I'm doing Roswell. Um, Onward is coming to Disney Plus in a few... I mean, this is later on, but Onward is coming to Disney Plus in a few weeks. I'm kind of glad I po- I didn't re- re- post my review when I initially saw it, because I think more people are going to see it now that it's on Disney Plus. And I'm going to eventually... I'm going to put that video out when that comes out on Disney Plus. Uh, but so be on the lookout for that. Uh, that's going to be fun. It's a great movie. If you're a D&D player, you are going to enjoy the hell out of it, and you're going to cry like a little baby bitch, because I cried like a little I baby I still bitch. need to see it. Um, oh, you'll mm-hmm. see it when it comes on Disney+. Plus. I will. You got Disney+. Plus. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, look forward to that. Uh, so, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's kind of a lull in terms of stuff. I'm probably going to put out a bunch of videos on shows that I'm, like, binge-watching while on quarantine, which include which is including but not limited to in the dark season one and a bunch of other different shows that I'm catching up on while in cor- while in like this quarantine mode, so look up for a bunch of those random reviews. Um, so that'll be fun. I, it's it's a, it's a good way to fill time. It keeps me creating content. That, that's one of, one of the great things about being a content creator. I'm already working from home, so I, I do, don't have but to worry about that's anything. discussion for another day. But yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this discussion on Beastars, and um, remember, just because you, you like shows with anthropomorphic animals, it doesn't make nope. you a furry. Don't let people judge you. Until next time, awesome. we'll catch you later.